and playing pinball, Mark? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to your City Commission study session. Today is Tuesday, December 1st, 2020. Please turn off or silence all cell phones during the meeting. Meetings are televised every day on Channel 2 at 7 p.m. and midnight and available for viewing on YouTube and Facebook Live. In accordance with Kansas Open Meetings Act, the meeting can be viewed on Channel 2 and via Facebook Live. The public is encouraged to view the meeting using one of those options. The City Commission meeting is open to the public with limited seating capacity. To mitigate the spread of COVID-19, face coverings and social distancing is required to attend the meeting. To attend the meeting in person, email cwilliamson at firstcity.org no later than 4 p.m. on December 1st to reserve a seat. Seats are available on a first-come, first-served basis. If you are not attending the meeting but would like to submit questions on an agenda item to be read during the discussions on that topic, email your comments or questions to cwilliamson at firstcity.org no later than 6 p.m. on December 1st. We have two agenda items um, this evening for the study session. First will be the quarterly update from the superintendent of the USD 453. And the second one will be city commission slash city planning commission joint session for the 2030 comprehensive plan. So without further ado, Dr. Rose, could you come on up? Good to see you. Thank you, thank you for it. Doesn't seem like too long ago you, you were here, <laughs> I <know>. but, uh, <laughs> but I know you're busy, but thanks for coming and uh, updating the city commission this evening. Absolutely, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Commission. Thank you for allowing me <clears throat> to join you this evening. Um, I have a, a couple updates on some, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, activities at the high school. As you know, our theater program is one of the best programs in the nation, um, and they are going to do a tribute on uh, December 11th at 7 p.m., it's going to be a virtual production of I'll Be Home for Christmas. And you can uh, uh, get, go to the website, LeavenworthHighSchoolTheater.com, and uh, uh, purchase some tickets for that, um, that production. And again, that is December 11th, 2020. One of the things that uh, was a topic um, statewide was the Kansas State High School Athletic Association. Um, they uh, held a meeting last Tuesday. Um, out of that meeting, they were talking about suspending winter sports until after the first of the year. Um, there was a lot of discussion uh, across the state. Um, as you know, um, every area of st the state of Kansas um, is reacting just slightly different to the COVID outbreak. Um, and so they did put forth that idea to postpone uh, winter sports until after the first of the year. That failed, but what came out of that was that uh, the moratorium, which is a delay from when kids can practice over Christmas break, usually was around five days. Now it's from uh, Jan uh, December 23rd through January 3rd, meaning there would be no practices, nobody in the schools um, during that time uh, for Acacia activities. The other thing um, is that there could be no competition, um, any competition from that December 23rd through January 7th. And then there will be no spectators uh, beginning today uh, through the 28th of January. I will tell you that they, uh, uh, my understanding is that there's going to be an appeal to the spectator part. And I believe that appeal is going to be heard by the Keisha's appeal board sometime next week. Uh, but as of now, uh, we would honor um, all of those uh, based on uh, participation um, in the Keisha uh, guidelines. One of the things that uh, um, I would like to thank the uh, uh, commission for is approving uh, the mass mandate for the city of Leavenworth. I know that that takes a lot of courage and, and uh, to stand up and, and to be able to do that. And the reason why I thank you is that um, we know from a school standpoint that our protocols seem to be somewhat effective, um, meaning that uh, to date we haven't had a student to teacher, teacher to student, student to student, coach to student, teacher to teacher transmission of the virus. Now we have had uh, 
uh, students that have tested positive. We have had staff that have tested positive. We've also had staff that's been quarantined, but all the quarantines, I shouldn't say all, a majority of the quarantines have come from uh, outside the school boundaries. And so we feel good about the protocol of sanitizing, the hand washing, uh, mask wearing, social distancing everywhere we can. Kids are eating school or lunches and breakfast in the classrooms. Our principals, our custodians, our teachers, um, everybody within the building that makes up those buildings are doing a great job helping monitor and do the things necessary for us to stay open. And so um, mask wearing is something that we believed was uh, uh, important um, as uh, a group of Leavenworth County superintendents. Uh, we did submit a letter of support uh, to Mr. Jamie Miller because I think he's done an outstanding job during all of this. Um, no decision he makes is probably going to be 100% favorable for everybody in the, in the county. But after having many conversations with him and many meetings, I also know that everything that he's doing is uh, he's trying to err on the safety of all the patrons of our county. And so we as school superintendents wrote a letter uh, to the county commissioners uh, in support of a mass mandate. As you well know, that did, that did fail. But for us in our school at USD 453, uh, you taking the stand uh, for those masks, I think was a, a great step in the help protection of keeping our schools open um, as long as we possibly can. And so with that, I, I just wanted to thank you all for that. And then the last thing that I have are just some construction updates. Um, our uh, early childhood center, uh, which is Lawson, um, is ahead of schedule. Um, I, I go through it once a week, almost once a week, and um, the transformation that takes place, uh, that has taken place within that building is just incredible. The, the spaces and, and the uh, uh, curricular type changes that have been made in that um, really, really will fit the bill of what our school board really set out to be is one of the premier programs in early childhood in the region and across the state. And, uh, you know, facilities do play a role in that. The atmosphere that kids get to come in and, and learn in uh, play a role in that. And uh, our outside uh, play area, which is a curriculum-based play area, is going to be second to none. And uh, super excited for that. It is running ahead of schedule. Um, we're looking at sometime in June, first part of July, for the completion date. Um, which right now is about 30 to 45 days ahead of schedule. So we're excited about that. The baseball softball complex has broken ground. Um, meeting with uh, Mammoth Construction, who is in charge of that, uh, that uh, project, um, they believe that they're still on. on uh, now, they will have some probably weather delays um, as we get into the winter months and moisture, but... They're still, uh, their goal is to have that to us by March 1. And that's uh, both the artificial turf and uh, the natural grass fields being done and complete by then. Um, the natural grass fields will take a little bit for the, uh, once the spring and it starts to warm up to root down, but um, we should be allowed uh, to play by mid uh, to end of April, the first part of the May schedule on our natural field fields as well if everything stays as of course. Um, all of the projects uh, from our high school to our, our new intermediate school to our Warren uh, Middle School campus, um, all of those projects are 100% complete um, and are being utilized today by students and staff. And so um, again, uh, Paul and his staff have done a great job working with our construction companies, um, getting the the necessary permits, working through any of the, uh, the bureaucracy that needed to be worked through uh, to get those and keep those going. And so we always appreciate the uh, opportunity um, to work with the city and its staff as we do those things. And then the last thing, I know uh, we're in the holiday season. This is crazy times. It's crazy times for us. Um, and I just want to wish each of you the happiest of holidays, and, and hopefully you do get to spend some time with family and friends and, 
and enjoy what the outgoing of 2020 and the incoming of 2021, which we all hope is much better. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Dr. Roth. Questions from uh, my fellow commissioners for Dr. Roth? I just have a comment. I, when they get ready to roll out the vaccines, I really think that uh, teachers should be in the, with that top tier. I don't know how the state's doing that, but I hope they do that. We, uh, as a group, and um, I should have mentioned this, uh, Senator Moran um, held a, a Zoom meeting with all the, or as many superintendents across the state of Kansas today. Um, and that was a point of discussion. Right now, um, even though uh, teachers are essential workers, um, it is our understanding that they're not going to be the first wave of vaccine. But there was a ma majority of the uh, administrators on today that was sharing um, that same idea about, you know, being able to keep schools open. And, and, and Senator Moran um, you know, is going to do what, he's, what he can, he said, to uh, help with that. But right now, our understanding is we wouldn't be a part of that first wave. Uh, but hopefully with uh, some pull, um, that, may, that may change. Well, with teachers having um, kids in school, I mean, if, if the parents are able to go back to work, you know, and, and that creates the, the jobs and alleviates the problem. So I, I'm glad you're doing that. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions for Dr. Roth, uh, Commissioner Price? Uh, Dr. Roth, a couple questions. One, uh, on uh, KA, the Athletic Association, regardless of how the appeal turns out, uh, is there any plan maybe to have someone live streaming on Facebook Live or something like that, home, ga home games or maybe even away games, I don't know. Uh, yes, um, we uh, even, well, this started prior to COVID, Actually, uh, uh, Mike Koontz, our athletic director, um, approached the board last, I believe it was about this time last year, uh, to work with a company um, that was coming in uh, and uh, installing all the cameras, installing uh, all the necessary uh, um, technology to be able to do that. Um, the only thing is, is that right now that it's a subscription-based um, and uh, but you can buy an individual game or you can buy the season package. Um, I told the uh, Leavenworth School Foundation today, um, in a lot of ways, you could look now, you could look at that uh, um, subs the subscription based part of it as what it would cost to go into a game um, and probably be cheaper to watch it at your house as opposed to uh, bringing three or four people and paying the, uh, the fee at the gate to, uh, to go in. But we do have that, and it is at uh, all of our home games and a majority of our away games because this company has a majority of that. Um, I don't have the exact website. I wish I would have uh, brought that, um, but you could get on our high school uh, webpage and it should be there. Okay, thank you. Uh, one other question. You've had a, I'm sure you, as you mentioned, you've had a lot of teachers who, or quite a few, teachers that have been quarantined, been taken out of the uh, school, so you probably have a need for substitutes. Uh, yes. Probably every school district now has a need for substitutes. Am I correct in that assumption? That is, uh, yes, that is extremely correct. Okay. <laughs> uh, and, and there was a letter to the editor from uh, uh, Kansas Representative-elect uh, Proctor last week, and it says, if you have at least 60 hours of college, and any of your work days free, I encourage you to go to the Kansas Department of Education website and apply for an emergency substitute license. It takes five minutes. Once your license arrives, step up, add your name to our school district sub list and help our teachers keep our schedules, our schools open. Uh, I happen to run into a couple teachers and they, they said, that, that's impossible, you can't do that in five minutes. So I talked to some teachers, and I actually talked to the Kansas Department of Education today in Topeka, and they said, here's the process, and correct me if I'm wrong, as you understand it, Dr. Roth, is number one, apply online via Form 8, whatever Form 8 is. And when you apply online, you have, you have to pay $60 to be paid with the application, and it's an extra $3 if you want to use your credit card. Uh, number two, uh, then you have to subs uh, submit your transcripts from an accredited college, and there's a cost to get the transcripts. Uh, K-State uh, charges $15 for transcripts. That's for normal processing. KU's 12, but of course, if you want 
FedEx or something like that could be extra charges. Uh, Kansas State Department of Education then will send you a fingerprint card to take to the police department and the sheriff's department to get fingerprinted, and there's a $10 charge for that. And it usually takes uh, Kansas Department of Education seven to ten days to get the card to you after you've made your initial application. And once the fingerprint card and transcripts are completed, you have to send that to KSDE, Kansas Department of Education, with another $50 for processing. So the total charges to KSDE is 110, charges to get fingerprints are 10, charges to get transcripts are 15 or 12, okay, I'm using KU or K-State as an example. So the costs really are about $135, and KSDE tells me that then it's about another four weeks to complete the background check once you send that in. So it, it is not a five-minute process, is it? Dr. Rowe? Yeah. It's not, no. Um, and then once, because uh, we can't hire until we know that you've passed all of that. And then we have some onboarding um, in our office as well, which we're expediting that as, uh, as quickly as possible. But um, it's a one to two day uh, training to go through our protocols from a school and the expectations and the employee handbook, those types of things as well. So um, it's, it's, if you can get in in uh, three to four weeks, um, you've hit a, a, a lull um, at the State Department to where they're able to process more, but usually it's at least four to six weeks. Yeah. Well, I, I concur with uh, Representative-elect uh, Proctor that I hope more people can step up, but I just want to really clear the air that it is not a five-minute process. It's quite a process, and it should be a process because we can't just have somebody in five minutes get their sub-license. Uh, dealing with kids. So uh, if people out there are interested, realize there is a process and there's a period of time. Right. So, uh, and they can contact our HR department, Amy Jo Troyer. She will help them through that process. Um, and uh, we'll do everything we can to, to, to make it seamless as possible for them. Um, but a lot of it is out of our hands. And the background checks are, are something that we don't want to be rushed on. Um, because we want to make sure the individuals, uh, to the best of our knowledge, um, that are working with kids have a clean, uh, have a clean uh, past in, as far as any types of uh, 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 violations. Okay, thank you. I do encourage people that do have that interest and uh, have the background and the proper amount of college. Mm -hmm. If they are interested, it is uh, an honorable thing to do, uh, but it's... It's, uh, it's a process that you have to go through and it does take some time. Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Rose. Commissioner Wilson, anything for the superintendent of uh, the Leavenworth district, school district? Uh, thank you for the update and that hard work as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Commissioner Wilson. Commissioner Lee Hart, anything? No, yeah, just a big thank you to you, Dr. Roth, and uh, to the teachers for all the hard work. I know it's been a really trying year for everybody, and we had to do a different types of models for how to teach, mm -hmm. but I appreciate all the hard work from you and the teachers, and, uh, you know, for a good year is what, you know, can happen. Right. Our teachers and staff have done a... F yeah. I mean, our from our custodians to our cooks to the drivers that drive for Easton to... Um, our aides are invaluable to this. Um, a lot of great teamwork and a hard 100%. time. One hundred percent, and they and they've been very flexible. And um, you know, there's been a lot of anxiety by them, but um, they truly do want to be in the classroom. And and we know the best learning model that there there are that there is is with students in front of teachers in classrooms to as, as much capacity as we can. Right. Doctor Ruth, I did have a question. Um, I don't know whether the money was made available through the CARES Act that the, the uh, legislature, the you know the Congress passed and the president signed back. I think it was in March or early April. But on the the meals for for students and the students' families that are in need, is that program uh, continuing? Yes, it's uh, <clears throat> continued throughout the school year. Um, that um, breakfast and lunches would be free to all students. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I remember that the last time you gave us a little bit of an update on that. And is that scheduled to, to um, expire at any point? Uh, to my knowledge, it's through the uh, 
night or the 2020-21 school year. Um, it's not planned at this time to be extended into the 21-22 school year. And that does include all students, even our remote students. Okay. And we do have remote sites where um, our food service department um, right now is serving from our ticket booth at the high school football field wow. and from uh, David Brewer, I believe. Yeah, well, that's the adaptability you're talking about. And I do, and I'm sure all the city commissioners join me. And, and uh, kudos to, your, to all the staff and faculty. And uh, I know it's only the first of December, but uh, you're not going to be back here before Christmas. But a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to all your staff. Thank you. So we appreciate you coming by and giving us an update. And um, one last point, sure, Mayor. Just want to, and I know, I think all of us know this, but for the public, uh, at Leavenworth School District USD four five three is the largest employer in the city of Leavenworth. I think you have what eight hundred some employees, eight or nine hundred. We have uh, uh, we have less than that. We have six hundred and ten, I believe. I believe you're the largest employer in the city. Obviously, Fort Leavenworth has more, but uh, for. Uh, Organizations within the city limits of Leavenworth, uh, the biggest employer. So it's very important to our economy and obviously to the youth of this town. It's uh, yeah. you know it's one of the most it's the most important thing. So thank you and your staff for all that you do. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rose. Thank you. All right. Happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next uh, agenda item is City Commission slash City Planning Commission Joint Session Comprehensive Plan for 2030. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, as you're aware, we've been going through this process for the Comprehensive Plan uh, over the course of this year. And so uh, this is just the latest step. Uh, this is another joint session with our Planning Commissioners. We've got uh, a few online with us tonight and one here. Um, you can come up to the table if you want, Mr. Burks. <laughs> Um, and so uh, Shelby Ferguson and Sheila Shockey are online um, with our consultants. They're going to take you through um, just a presentation and just some steps to uh, re further refine some of the goals that you've previously discussed. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to Shelby and Sheila. Mr. Joe Burks, he's part of, he's yep. part of the planning yep. commission. Yep, Joe Burks is on our planning commission, and mm -hmm. I know that we've got at least two more uh, on the go-to meeting. Okay. tonight with us as well. Okay. Who, who are they? Uh, I believe I saw Mike Burke and yes. Sherry Woodson. Okay. Good evening, uh, Ms. Woodson and Mr. Burke. Thank you for joining us here this evening. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to welcome them. And, yep. and of yep. course, uh, Shelby Ferguson and Sheila Shockey. So. Yep. Yep. Great. Drum roll. Yep, you guys, you guys can go ahead. Can you all hear me? Oh. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay, yep. I just wanted to confirm. Um, and thank you, uh, Mayor and Commissioners and Planning Commissioners, uh, for joining us this evening. Um, as, as Julie said, um, we're here tonight to go over um, the goals and objectives piece of the, the comprehensive plan process. Um, as you recall, previously last month, we, we um, broke into groups and talked about um, desired outcomes and what we'd like to see for um, your community um, in the next 10 years. And so from that, um, we have taken what we've heard from the focus group over the last few months, um, what we've heard discuss with you all, and then also what we've been hearing um, through um, public engagement, and we've started to form uh, a draft, draft goals and objectives. And so we're going to uh, walk through those with you this evening. Um, I'll give a, a quick little recap of where we are to date um, just in the, the planning process and also um, engagement. Um, and then I'll dive into more of what we've heard from the community um, with each piece. Um, of the chapters of the comprehensive plan as we look at the goals. Um, but uh, with that, I will also, um, as, as mentioned, Sheila Shockey is with me also this evening. So she'll be helping uh, facilitate the conversation and um, move through those. And so what we're really looking at um, tonight, as I said, is the goals and objectives. Um, we did provide you the draft strategies within your packet that you received last week. Um, but for right now, we really want to talk high level um, and not get into the details of those strategies and 
really talk about the goals, objectives, and um, make sure that we're all um, on the same page with those. And then um, following this discussion, we will refine those further um, based on our conversation here this evening. Um, I just want to confirm, could you repeat, uh, I missed which planning commissioner do you have there in person? We've got Joe Burks here in person. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, um, so with that, I will go ahead and share my screen. Um, and like I said, I've got um, the presentation um, queued up. Uh, if at any point you have a question, feel free to um, just stop me and we will, uh, I, I can answer any questions from there. So. Um, Struggling to move this, just one second. Oh, I apologize. Anyone have, oh, there we go. Um, so like I said, we'll go through the engagement and just a project update, and then we'll really look at um, the, the goals and objectives the entire time. And then we'll just um, do a wrap up of next steps um, and any questions that you may have. So to date, um, we, we established the, the vision statement and this is just here to remind you of what we discussed and what we landed on as the vision for the 11 or 2030 plan um, that in 2030 people will live, work, and stay in Leavenworth because of the diverse employment opportunities and economic growth, affordable housing and vibrant neighborhoods, connectivity within our city and to the region, quality education, training, and lifelong learning, accessible quality health care, natural spaces and facilities for active living, outstanding public safety. The residents and visitors value Leavenworth's unique history, destination, and experiences. We are unified, welcoming, and committed to making Leavenworth the best city in the Midwest. And as discussed, the, the bullet points um, are there as more detail, but the overall uh, vision statement would be those um, three sections there in the, the white font. Before you, are, are you going to say anything else about the vision, um, Ms. Ms. Ferguson? I'm sorry? Were you going to say anything else about the vision or if I haven't, if I haven't, I just wanted to see whether the commissioners, I, I think it's a really good uh, vision statement and probably more importantly is the process that, that you and, and stakeholders, including the city commission, have gone through to establish it. But I just wanted to see whether any of my fellow commissioners had a, had a comment on the, on the vision. If not, we'll, we'll continue to move on. I think it's excellent. Yeah, I do too. Okay. I think it's all encompassing. Okay. All right. We'll, uh, okay. Great. We'll, okay. We'll move forward. Thank we'll you. move forward then. Um, so as I said, just public engagement, just a, a quick kind of recap and let you know where we're at. Um, back in October, uh, at the end of October, we released the 11 or 2030.com uh, website. Um, since we've released that, we've had uh, 43 participants register um, and we've had over 350 site visits. Um, of those 350 site visits, um, the, that would include individuals who have not registered for the uh, site. Um, we are asking for individuals to register on the site um, to participate in most of the surveys and polls. You uh, can uh, participate in the quick polls uh, without uh, registering. Uh, however, we are asking for the registrations at this time. Uh, just so that we can make sure that we're getting a full cross-section of your community. Um, so when we ask you to register, we're um, asking individuals to identify if they live in Leavenworth, if they live and work there, um, if they don't live in Leavenworth, or if they, they work in Leavenworth but they live somewhere else, et cetera. And then we've asked them to identify um, on a map where what quadrant of the city that they live in. That way we can really start to get a, an idea of um, who's responding and what areas of the city are not. Um, at this time, we're seeing that most of our activity of um, participants who have registered um, are within the uh, middle section of the community. 
Um, so ranging from uh, east-west city limits to uh, Spruce Street and down to Limit Street. Um, in addition to launching the website, we also have uh, conversation kits uh, available. We have digital copies on the website, and then we also have hard copies. Um, they're, they're just little kits that include everything that you would need um, to have a, a discussion and really talk about uh, the community and where you want to see it in the next 10 years. Um, and those can be picked up at City Hall. Um, and then also they can be dropped off at the Project Kiosk, uh, which are located at City Hall, uh, Price Chopper, and at the Public Library. Um, you may have seen the kiosks in those locations. And so, as I mentioned, those are used um, as, as drop-off locations for the conversation kits, but they're also um, used just to promote the, the website and really get the branding of the, the project out there. And then in addition, uh, we, we provided uh, leave-behind cards that are, um, look like the kiosks, um, very similar to uh, the image here on the right. Um, and we left those cards um, and posters in uh, 15 um, or more of the businesses in the, the downtown um, that were willing to participate. Um, and then in addition, we've reached out to uh, the Main Street uh, program and uh, disseminated the, an email to all of the members uh, within the Main Street program. Um, just a little bit of the um, input that we've heard so far um, of just one of our general mapping activities that's on the main page is what do you love about Leavenworth and what places would you consider a must uh, when, when visitors are in town or just places that you love to go. And so this is just um, a, a quick snapshot of the, in, uh, the places that have been identified on the map. Um, anything from the, the public library to the Riverfront Community Center um, to your museums and trails, um, the, the schools, um, and then the district, the historic district shopping areas, um, and then the just items within the new developments that you, you have, uh, so the, the quick trip and the Starbucks. Um, and then one individual even indicated that they have family at the Mount Calvary Cemetery so that they enjoy um, going there and that's part of their history. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, um, we'll go ahead and get started with um, looking at the goals and objectives and kind of a recap for each of the chapters, unless anyone has any questions about the engagement. And I, I should also mention too, for. Um, anyone who's listening, um, and also just for you all to, to know, too, in case anyone asks you um, any comments or questions um, regarding the input or if any direct feedback um, that is um, desired to be put in, it can be put on the website, but it also can um, be emailed to myself if you'd like, and you can reach um, me. I don't believe my email is actually on the website. So um, you can reach me at my um, email, which is Shelby, S-H-E-L-B-Y, at shockyconsulting.com. Um, and feel free to reach out to me that way if you have anything that you'd like to directly um, provide as input that you feel uh, may not um, be able to uh, be conveyed on the website as clearly or if uh, you have a more lengthy comments that need to be um, provided. And with that, does anyone have any questions, comments? I actually, I actually do have a question. Are the kiosks that we talked about, are those mobile kiosks that we could potentially put around different locations? I.e., we just had the, the largest, one of the largest employers in the city with the education system. So are they mobile? Yes, they are. Actually, I will be picking up the one at the price chopper here in the next few weeks um, because we were only... Um, allowed to have it placed there for uh, six weeks. So I'm actually looking to pick that up here in the next week or so. Um, so if there are other locations um, that you'd like to place those, we can definitely do that. Good, good point. Thank you, Mr. Burks. Yeah. Any other comments, questions? Not right now. Okay, I will take that and we'll move on. So uh, as 
as mentioned, we're going to dive right on into the discussion then um, about the, the goals and objectives. And so we'll start with the uh, first uh, chapter, which is chapter one, community identity. And uh, to, to provide you a recap, um, I will, uh, we, we've created some short videos for you all. So I will go ahead and get that one. The first one started for you. You better bring popcorn. <laughs> We can't hear it, Shelby. Is there supposed to be music or something? Or? You may have to unplug your earphones. Can you all hear? No, let's start it over. Okay. I think you need to unplug your I did unplug them. So, okay. Let me see. Let me know if you can hear it now. Were you able to hear it now? Not really. Yeah. Uh, Shelby, it's we actually may a setting when you share your screen. So if you turn off the screen share and then click it again, there should be a, okay. a checkbox. And it should say beta audio. Okay. I apologize about that. Mm -hmm. All right. We're, we're, um, we're Zoomers. We're Zoomers, so go to meeting soon. <laughs> Where would the um, turn off the presenter piece of it be? Um, if you hover your mouse in the center of the screen at the bottom and click the screen button, it should be blue. Mm -hmm. It's the screen share button. All the way down in the controls. I'm not seeing that. You might you have to get a presentation mode and then you can see your um, down, you know, where your mic and your camera and your screen share is. Okay, it looks like it's okay. Okay, I think we're we're good now. So sorry about that. A whole new world. <laughs> All right. The City of Lebanon is planning our future for the next 10 years, and we have questions. Uh, I apologize. Well, no, sorry. Let's talk about community identity now and in the future. What is Leavenworth's identity? How do we celebrate our community? Southern Earth population is just over 36,000, according to the American Community Survey in 2018. Leavenworth grew rapidly from 1960 to 1990, with slower growth over the last two decades. How can we increase our livability score as we continue to grow? To reach our vision of 2030, what historical and cultural assets should be preserved? What makes Leavenworth unique? Our many attractions, such as 
C.W. Parker Carousel Museum, Historical Wayside Tour, and the First City Museum, to name a few, are just a few of the great attractions that Lovemore has to offer. To reach our vision of 2030, what is our community saying? The Lovemore community would like to preserve and promote historical and cultural resources by resource building to gather, live, and learn. With hopes of having a strong, supportive, and active community for all ages, with a focus on activities for youth and young families. To reach our vision of 2030, what are our goals? Can you all hear me? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Great. Um, so, so with that, that's just like I said, a quick recap of what what we've heard so far, what we've we've been starting to find, or what we found in our analysis, um, and also just the questions that we're asking um, as we develop this plan. And so, from what we've heard um, today, uh, here is our first goal um, based on preserving historic and cultural resources. Uh, the goal is to preserve our welcoming and inclusive community that celebrates its past and provides opportunities for all. Um, so this this goal um, is the goal for the entire chapter. So it'll um, it'll go over the historical and cultural resources, unique um, uh, unique places, and then also a uh, sense of community. Um, so what are your thoughts? Um, on, on this one, on this goal, and then also just within this for historic and cultural resources, um, we would be looking at objectives of um, promoting historic resources and the value of historic preservation, um, preserving our historic resources and assets, creating places people want to live, gather, and visit, and then um, incense historic preservation. Do you feel that this is um, something that that you all agree with? Is there anything missing from this? Is, is there any way to make the just the, the print a little larger on the on the slider or not? We don't have this in our packet, so we yeah. yeah. It's like I'm flying blind here. It might yeah. be on starting to be fifty-six. I'm, I'm trying to find it. That's but that's better. Oh. That's yeah. So oh, okay. Least, good. Yeah, can, so we can at least read the goal. Yeah, that's better. Okay, thanks, Mark. That's 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 good. I can see it now. Okay. Um, okay, I see where we're at. Yep. Any comments from um, commissioners or planning commission members on on the goal? I'd like to hear from maybe Mr. Burks or uh, or some of the planning commissioners that are online for your thoughts and. On your process that you have uh, met on this a couple times, have you not? And uh, yeah. tell us what you've gone through and what your thoughts are. You had a really diverse group that came together to put this together, and I wasn't able to get with every one of their meetings over time, but to see um, the collaboration and involvement was huge. So you did get representation from every part of the city. Yeah, with goal one, and no issues. I, I think goal, goal one was fine. I think that um, this is uh, my, um, the mayor. You know, the whole thing in terms of the uh, the importance of this city and the settling of the West and the and the culture. I mean, that is really important. But as a as a culture that we value our history, historical preservation. But as a means to continue to modernize and, and give us the impetus to, you know, uh, unabashedly move into the future. So, I don't know, um, that, not that I have a specific um, recommendation on changing goal one, but that's kind of my uh, reaction to it. And opportunities for all people going forward. Uh, opportunities for all people in the city as a, as, as a city, as an entity, um, that would be my feedback. I can't give you a, a restated goal one. It's not too bad, but that's what I would say, Ms. Ms. Ferguson. 
Any other comments or from commissioners or planning commission members? Um, in terms of the objectives, um, I don't know, there might be one that kind of gets to the opportunities going forward. I, I don't know. That, there's, that, there's that element of the future of, of being um, not knowledgeable and um, uh, appreciative of our past, but using that as a springboard to continue to move forward and modernize. That, that, that's, my, that's my comment about that goal, and maybe a, maybe a fourth objective. I, I like the idea of springboard, yeah. you know, to the future, right. but I, I think we've, we're covering some of the future stuff in later. Okay, yeah, yeah we could, later could objectives goals. We could be, we'll say, yeah, if we are, that's fine. But, but I do like the idea of using using that as a springboard sure. to the future. Sure. That's what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. So that's our feedback. Unless any of the other commissioners have anything else, Ms. Ferguson, can we? You want to move to the next one? Sure, we can. We can move on. Um, unless on you need. Question. Unless you need. Yeah. Unless you want something more specifically from us on this one. No, no, that, that's, that's all really great. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll definitely take a look at that a little bit more. I, you know, as, as I was hearing, it's, it's a community for all, but we want to make sure that we're, we're looking at, um, you know, modernizing the historic um, pieces of, you know, while we're preserving the historic piece of Love Leavenworth, we also need to consider and move forward with what modernizations um, there are and, you know, making sure that we're inclusive for the entire community. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll definitely take a look at that and, sure. um, okay. and, and put, some, put some more thought into that for you all. That's good. Thank you. Uh, so as I mentioned, this this chapter has uh, the same goal throughout. Um, but so for this one, um, we'll, we'll look at just in terms of sense of community, um, we're, we're looking to encourage residents to participate fully um, in social, cultural, and economic life um, of the community and to embrace the community's uh, diversity um, and respect the differences, um, ethnicity, gender, sexuality, gender, sexual orientation, age, age belief, um, and ability. Um, so we're just really honing in on that inclusivity piece of, of what your community is um, and making sure that people can, you know, participate within the community um, in all aspects of life. Okay. And then looking at unique attraction, um, as, as I mentioned, same goal. Um, but really kind of um, looking at expanding on the unique attractions that um, Leavenworth has um, and then finding ways uh, to promote uh, downtown and promote tourism and um, drawing, drawing people from the, the community to the downtown area. Are there any thoughts um, on, no, on I... those? No, I'll just say that, um, and I'm not going to get into a laundry list of the unique attractions, but I would say that, um, and unfortunately, we, you know, was it 2000, 2019, we had the first Camp Leavenworth, and I think that's got a lot of potential. I mean, it was a very good inaugural um, Camp Leavenworth, and this year we couldn't do it because of COVID-19, but that's one of the unique attractions that I think we need to keep in mind, in addition to all the other things. And Because it reached all age yeah. groups. So um, that's, that's just a comment. Nothing that you have to change at this point, but just, just a comment. Any, anything else? Any other thoughts? Any, any, any other anything thoughts from anyone online? online? No, I'm good with that. You go on to Mike or Sherry, do you have anything? Um, this is Sherry. I, I like to draw to the downtown area. I think that's... Uh, uh, very imperative in this town, um, so I, I really like that. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, great. Yeah, that's that's something that we've heard over and over. Um, you know, from our focus group conversations and and with you all, and then also online. It's just um, really drawing residents downtown um, and making sure that we really um, 
emphasize the, the attractions that you all do have currently and making sure that those are preserved and the downtown area specifically. I don't think that a lot of people from the metropolitan area realize the gem that Leavenworth has in the downtown area. Mm -hmm. um, I used to live in Johnson County and, um, you know, I have several get-togethers for my Johnson County friends and I bring them to Leavenworth and they're always in awe when I bring them downtown for like the charm hunt or the tunnel tour or, you know, those type of get-togethers. So, um, it's, it's fascinating to see their faces and mm -hmm. I'd like more people to know about it. Yeah, so good point. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great. And that, that's our hope. Um, you know, like I said, we'll get into the, the details further, but that is actually um, one of the, the strategies within this, this specific goal and objective is uh, to, to create a marketing um, piece, um, external and internally, so that, um, you know, it does really start to promote that tourism and, you know, highlight um, the, the gyms of downtown. That's good. That's good feedback. Thank Perfect. You. I like that. I, I think people like to have those little like weekend getaways from mm -hmm. the big city, and like we're close enough to the city that it's it's doable, but not so far away that it's uh, it could be expensive for some families. So I think it's it's a good draw. Good. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I I fully agree with that. It's been a while since um, I've been to Leavenworth, and and as you said, you know you. People kind of forget um, what what you have down downtown and within the community. So, um, you know that was all reignited um, as we pursued the project, and now that we've been working on it. So, I, I fully agree with that. Thank okay. you, thank you, Ms. Woodson. For any your other comments, comments questions? Sir. No, I just think the the, qu the quality of that feedback was very good. I thank you, Ms. Woodson, for the for that contribution. You're welcome. No, I think we can go on, Great. Uh, Ms. So, Person. Okay. If there's nothing else on that, we'll move on to Chapter 2, which is the built environment. Mm -hmm. We're currently working on planning for the built environment in the next 10 years. Let's talk about what it is now and what it will be in the future. In 2030, what are the housing needs? How do we attract, encourage, and support diverse housing options? How do we revitalize neighborhoods? Will new housing be affordable? How will older housing be maintained? What will the housing needs be for future generations? How can we ensure that their needs are being met? Reach our vision in 2030. How will Leavenworth neighborhoods need to be changed? Will they need to be revitalized? Will Leavenworth be an affordable place to live for diverse family types? In 2030, how do we enhance mobility, both locally and regionally? Currently, the majority of Leavenworth residents commute to work alone by car. How do we provide more choices of transportation modes? In 2030, does infrastructure costs limit the amount of new development and redevelopment? Are there opportunities to improve or expand city services through new infrastructure technologies? How do we provide reliable, sustainable wastewater and stormwater services that protect water quality, public health, reduce property damage, and facilitate development? To reach our vision of 2030, what is our community saying? The community of Leavenworth envisions the built environment to include affordable housing to attract young adults, a decrease in sidewalk gap, and improvement of the existing sidewalk, an enhancement of trail connections and gateways throughout the city, in addition to a continued effort in providing great park and maintenance throughout the city. To reach our vision of 2030, what are our goals? So we'll start with neighborhood and housing. This one has, um, this one is the, the chapter that always uh, has a bunch to discuss. So we'll start with uh, neighborhood and housing, um, the, which is goal three, which is attract and support 
a wide range of population groups in diverse neighborhoods that are well maintained, clean, safe, and efficiently functioning. So with that, the objectives are to maintain the current share of the county's population within Leavenworth. As the county grows, so does the city. Increase the variety of housing types, sizes, and price points available to meet changing needs increase the occupancy rate of existing housing, and improve the conditions of deteriorating housing. Okay, so does anyone have any comments on that? Let's, let's talk about the goal first. Um, do we feel like this encompasses um, the needs and what is, uh, what's been desired for the neighborhoods and housing of Leavenworth? Well, we have real challenges here because we have 50% of our housing is rental. Yeah, that's true. But there is a wide variety of rental. <laughs> can, you, can you just enlarge the goal three a little bit, please? Um, just, a, just a bit. Yeah, that's better. Diverse, well-tamed, clean, efficient, functioning. And I like attract, but I also like retain. Right. Attract, retain, and support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I yes. get them here and keep them here. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. Point. Yeah. I, I, that's a good point. Whether it's citizens, whether it's businesses, attraction, but the retention is important too. You can't, well, you can't forget about that. And even if you have even college, you know, young people that go off to college, and then you know you want them to want to come yeah. back here. Yeah. And do, and live. I think those are great goals. Okay, so if I heard correctly, um, so we want to look at um, adding in, um, re retain um, the housing stock um, or retain the population, yeah. um, not only just uh, attracting. Yeah, and I think the, the variety of housing types is, and sizes and price points is, is important, but it is challenging. Um, to to achieve that objective, so we've got to, I don't know, as we go forward, we have to figure out maybe, maybe some strategies or approaches that would facilitate that, some action items, but um, that, is, that is challenging. I mean, there is houses that are being built, developments that are being built, um, and there's still, you know, there's a lot of great housing in Leavenworth that, you know, was built in the, what, the 70s and the 80s, and, uh, when homeowners keep those properties up, they're they're very attractive, um, and I think you know, for young people, you know that that could be an opportunity for them to own, own a home. I yeah. mean, I saw a lot of them over the last few months, and um, so we can we can be innovative and creative, I think. But it, but it, it is challenging to uh, to have that variety, I think, in any city. But. Any other comments from? Commissioners on these uh, objectives related to goal three from the Planning Commission members, anything you want to contribute? Uh, Commissioner Wilson here. Go ahead. I, I have nothing to Okay. Okay, I, unless, and, and, and oh. the Commissioner Leonhard, did you have something? Or? Well, I don't know. The objective 3D improve the condition of deteriorating housing. Is that meaning the train of thought that younger people would come back and restore the housing? Oh, sorry. When <laughs> Objective 3D, uh, improve the condition of deteriorating housing. Is the thought behind that that maybe younger people or anyone in general would move here and, and, mm -hmm. and fix it up and type thing or, right, or right. instead of being tore down? Well, not only that, the companies mm -hmm. that have... That own own houses or 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 have contracts on houses would keep that up yep. as well. Okay. I mean, it's overall, and then right. as a city, we you know would want to get rid of the deteriorating ones that we yeah. can't uh, restore, and then yeah, yep. those okay. those, okay. those are three three ways they could be taken care okay. of. 
Yeah, part and of we've that. got things like our rental coordinator right. who right. helps with that as well. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's several different options yeah. on that one thing, but it's a good objective. Okay. And we have gotten a little more aggressive, I think, over the last few years as far as, you know, the, the houses that are unoccupied and that, you know, there hasn't been progress made to bring them back up to code. Um, and we need to continue that. There's some things that we're doing now that we just need to reinforce and continue. That, and that could be something under improve the condition of deteriorating ha uh, housing. Um, but Commissioner Price, or anything? Any thoughts or on this one? Uh, no, I uh, objective three D has always yeah. been very high right. on my list. Obviously, right. and you did mm -hmm. emphasize yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can go on to the next one unless there's any comments from our planning commission members. We can go on to the next one, Ms. Ferguson. Okay, and and yes, we'll we'll look into the objective three D a little further. Um, with with everything that you all said, um, it does look at um, various types of improvements for those deteriorating houses um, based on just code improvements and maintenance um, design standards. Um, when we really dive into those strategies. So okay. we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get into that a little bit more with you all in the future, but um, okay. sounds, like, sounds like it's a, an objective that we want to leave though. So. Yes, okay. okay. So we'll move on to, no, maybe. Um, so mobility, looking at um, providing a model transportation system that is connected, safe, and efficient, um, looking to improve and increase transportation options, invest in sustainable roadways, wide um, sidewalks along thoroughfares, and recreational trails along the streamways to encourage walking and biking. Agree with all that. And then also looking at mobility, um, just to, I'll jump ahead and then we can go back and look at them specifically, just so you know what we do have coming up um, is to improve the transportation system, to increase access to employment opportunities, particularly those without personal vehicles. Um, and then that's reducing the number of sidewalk segments where gaps are disconnected for the system for walking, evolving the transportation system to take advantage of new technologies, and ensure that the areas with high job density are accessible to employees via one or more travel modes. Okay. Any thoughts on mobility, if there's something missing or um, something hasn't been captured? Just um, in turn, and I thought I saw it um, in, the, in the packet that I looked at that was part of our read ahead. Just, um, I mean, I understand, um, trans, you know, maybe looking at transportation a little bit differently for job opportunities and for people working, but it's, there's also a need, I think, for people to get around the city, in, you know, intra city to appointments, people who are disabled. And I know that the Council on Aging has some of that, but mm -hmm. I don't know, I, I just thought that, that we need to probably at least address that with respect to a, you know a, a program or a pilot program or a proof of principle going forward intra intra city and I hope uh, we do. <laughs> yeah definitely I mean, <laughs> are, are you yeah. supportive of that right commissioner i think we're she, going to okay, right well, okay. yeah she's been working, I, and like i said i it. thought i saw it um <laughs> on one of the charts but i'm not sure i saw it up, up here but that's my only comment about that i think you know we well, and there was something in here. I don't think it was under mobility, but connecting no. St. Mary's with downtown and whatever. But I think the education, um, the higher education, getting kids to the Pioneer Center, Kansas City, Kansas mm -hmm. Community College, KU has classes and things yeah. like that. I think in the Kansas City area, the transportation and at KU, especially in Lawrence, transportation is huge in um, the education system. You know, getting kids to and from school and other other events. Right. So. Okay. That okay. might be covered in another part too. Could be. Any uh, any other comments from commissioners? Uh, Did I hear something? We, we we discovered a way to get a transport uh, transportation system here. Absolutely. 
<laughs> We're going to work on it. Yeah. It's in the works. I think, I think oh, it's great. I, can't, I think it's great. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. President, uh, listening to people who think about the future, uh, there's some schools of thought in another 10, 15 years, people will not own cars. Everything will be an Uber economy or you just rent it for that, you know, that hour that you needed or whatever it might be. Right. Uh, so, and I believe that it'll go that way, I think. Mm -hmm. Probably in Silicon Valley or something like that will be the places where it starts or some places in Europe, but we will grow to that point too. And I think that all needs to be considered. Uh, you know, the need for two cars in every family, sometimes three and four, probably I'm thinking is going to go away. Maybe not in my lifetime, but in right. the younger commissioner's lifetimes uh, that that could happen. And uh, I think that Levmore should be prepared for that, as as should any city. Right. That's a good point. Yeah, look, and part of that's, I think, related to climate change and trying to reduce, uh, you know, the emissions from carbon. And they, so a lot of these are interrelated. And I think we've done a good job uh, so far, kind of uh, the interrelationship of some of these goals and objectives. And as Commissioner Bowder has pointed out to me, uh, just because it's not in one area, it could be you know under another particular goal or objective. So, but all those things, uh, many of them are related. Yeah, because it all uh, comes together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, um, I, I think that is certainly the way of the future, and um, maybe not in ten years, but certainly in 20 or 25 or 30. But any other uh, comments from planning um, commission members on this one? Okay. Next, we'll go, we can go on to the next one, Ms. Ferguson. We can do that. We'll go on to infrastructure and utilities. Looking at goal six, uh, to maintain a reliable and sustainable infrastructure and utilities for future generations. So looking at establishing funding mechanisms to advance community systems in a procedural process, upgrade the city design standards to protect water quality, reinstall necessary pipes, and install green infrastructure, and apply technology to city infrastructure and utility improvements projects to attract technology-based companies and renewable energy sectors. And that's the only one on that um, section for utilities and infrastructure. Any thoughts? Well, well, based on yeah. Yeah. is based off of looking at um, the, you know, as, as the recap showed, the um, sectors that the that Leavenworth residents mainly work in is the um, healthcare and social assistance education. and education services. Um, however, it's been projected that um, in the next 20 years, the region as a whole will uh, start to pull in more uh, scientific and tech-related um, sector jobs. Okay. Mr. Yeah, my only comment, Sheila, this is Paul Kramer, is um, it would it would represent a bit of a sea change for the city uh, to look more at um, environmental considerations, and I think it's something that we've, as a commission, have decided on through this process and the planning commission. And but it's, mm -hmm. you know, I just want to make everybody aware that it's something we'll have to embrace. It is a change from a lot of what we do. We have incorporated a lot of stuff, water quality issues, getting pipe out of the ground, getting native grasses, getting open swales. Um, I like this, but you know, if, if we go forward with this, we'll start seeing some different changes, some different ideas, some different techniques uh, than we've used since I've been here. So I just you know, want to make that point that a lot of these are continuations of stuff we've talked of. If, if we start looking toward green solutions and green infrastructure and renewable type stuff, and then you could see some changes from stuff we've done in the past. So that's awesome. Yeah, as, as we look at the League of Municipalities, some of the stuff that different cities have done to become green, thinking of Greensburg for one, who right. tornado wiped them out so they could start from scratch. Right, right. I know it's going to be expensive to try to change processes like that, but it might be something, you know, that we can get ideas from other communities mm -hmm. and look at. Yes, good comments. 
Anything from our planning uh, commission members on this one? Hearing, no, hearing none, we can go to the next one, uh, Ms. Ferguson. So public facilities uh, provide natural spaces and facilities for active living, uh, which would increase energy efficiency and re reduce building maintenance costs for existing and new public facilities, leverage the technology to improve facility management, maintenance, and operations, and then provide high quality facilities and services for existing and future residents, uh, workforce, and businesses. Any comments from commissioners on uh, this particular goal? I think this one, uh, I agree with it, but uh, being an older city, and especially some of our public buildings, and this building is a yeah. prime example, uh, you know, this is, this is a historic building. It looks historic. And making it more, I mean, we can make it more energy efficient, uh, but we probably can't build it to the standards of city halls. If you go to any new city hall in the Kansas City area, uh, Mr. Kramer, Mr. Tedder can tell you that there's one entrance, you meet someone, for you, you take in security, you take in uh, mm -hmm. efficiency right. and things like that. This building, we can't. We could build one to do it, and what do we do, tear down this building? I don't think anybody wants to do that yeah. because of historical nature. So there's a balancing act. We have a little bit of a catch-22 in some of these public facilities. But we do have 464 acres of uh, parks in this town, and maintaining and uh, advertising, maintaining those is, is very important to our, to our folks. Right. Yeah, and I, I think we've definitely made an investment in the last few years as far as the parks, and uh, I know nice. that the, the Summy Park has gotten a lot of great feedback, I think, from the citizens. and. Just by virtue of looking at, I mean, it, we're getting into winter now and everything, but looking at the number of families and children uh, out there, um, I think it's definitely the way to go, particularly as it's related to uh, family-oriented, not only family-oriented, but family-oriented uh, city, you know, being one strength of our city in, in the past and now and going forward. So I would, I would emphasize that, too, in terms of the invest, continuing to invest in our parks and in our parks. Mm -hmm. Any other comments from planning commission members? If not, we could go to the next one. Excuse me, before we go out, this is Mike Burke of Planning Commission. Um, just heard a lot of discussion and use of the word parks, but I don't see that in the, in, I see natural spaces and I see no public, no public facilities. That would it be possible to add the word park so people understand that's what we're talking about? Thank you. Good point. Yes, we'll, we'll make note of that and look into fitting that into to this goal. Sure. Yeah, if you go on Harmony in Nature, you've got a lot of that in there too, it looks right. like. Right, that's that overlap. That's okay. overlap. Yeah. And overlap. Overlap's fine, uh, yeah. but we just that's need to be aware of that because I, I do think in, in another category, we, 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 but I think, you know, our parks are public facilities, so that they need to be they need to be mentioned. Thank you, uh, Mr. Burke. Go ahead, Ms. Ferguson. Oh, is this okay? This is, is this was this another goal goal eight? Okay. Yes, we have another one for public facilities, and so it's looking at um, re maintaining reliable and sustainable infrastructure and facilities for future generations. Uh, so, ensuring that the facilities and spaces are equ equitably distributed throughout the community and designed to be safe, served by different transportation modes, and accessible to visitors with mobility impairment. Yeah. I think Sounds that's good. fine. Go ahead. Uh, Sounds good to me. Right, I think that's fine. Um, and this, I think, what was the renovation done on City Hall? Was it 15 years ago, or was it? Uh, but I don't know. We've got. We've got historical buildings that are great, but I mean, they are going to have to be updated and uh, we just need to be aware of that. We are aware of it, make it part of the budget process and uh, keep them at a high standard of uh, functionality and uh, appearance, aesthetics. So. Well, we've got other others like the... Yeah, maintenance service center. And, yeah, yeah, the service center. And right, exactly. Would that include the Hollywood Theater and all yeah, that in here too? So those are part of it too. Yeah. And, um, 
yeah, so all those public facilities go into that, um, are in that mix, and um, we just need to be aware of that, and we have to, if they're going to continue to be um, used and continue to um, be good facilities for, for public events, we just got to main, maintain them and, and uh, renovate what's necessary and keep them functional and aesthetically pleasing for the future. So that's a statement of the obvious, but that's kind of what we, I think we have. In the, and maybe there's an opportunity for, to do something new. I, I don't know, but we'll have to, uh, we'll see as we, as we go forward into the future years. Okay, anything from uh, planning commission members on this one? Okay, go ahead, Ms. Shelby. Next, Ms. Shelby. <laughs> Ms. Ferguson, go ahead. Sure, so this is the last one for uh, the built environment section. And it's to develop a vibrant, attractive, and welcoming community. I'll provide attractive gateways and corridors in the community. So this really leans on um, what we've heard about, uh, you know, the more vegetation and drawing people to uh, downtown and providing more gateways um, that are noticeable to uh, the, the entrances of the city, um, and then also just really along 4th Street and in the downtown area um, mm -hmm. would be the focus, especially for the community appearance piece of it. Um, but it would be throughout the community also. Yeah, I think that's a good goal, a good objective, and you know the, the key will be the you know kind of the actions that are associated with that have to get accomplished to meet that accomplish that objective. But I'm comfortable with with these two. Yeah. You uh, go to the next one, Miss Ferguson. Go ahead, please. <laughs> The City of Leavenworth is planning for the natural environment in the next 10 years. Let's talk about what the environment is now and what it should be in the future. In 2030, how do we reduce greenhouse gas emissions and increase energy efficiency? How can we continue to ensure healthy air quality for our residents and conserve our natural environment? Leavenworth has a number of creeks in close proximity to the Missouri River. How can we ensure high quality water for residents and aquatic species alike? To reach our vision of 2030, what is our community saying? The Leavenworth community envisions the natural environment in 2030 to include preserved green and open spaces, an increase in vegetation in the downtown area and along streets throughout the community in addition to incentives provided for renewable energy resources and native planting. To reach our vision of 2030, what are our goals? So for this section, we have two goals. Uh, goal 10, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, energy, and water usage, and increase the renewable energy and mitigate climate-related impacts. So then looking within that to prioritize renewable energy and plan for impacts of climate change. And then goal 11, restore, connect, and protect natural habitats and sensitive lands and waterways uh, with an objective of stabilizing floodplains and creek riverbanks. Comments from uh, commissioners and or planning commission members. I think these are good. Looks good to me. Um, what was I going to say? The goals. Yeah, the, the goals are good. The objectives are good. And then, you know, the, the real things that have to be done, obviously, will be, you know, type actions that will be under each one of those objectives. But I'm comfortable with, with this. And um, um, we can... Commissioner Bowder's point before in terms of maybe looking at some other cities within the Kansas City metro area or other like uh, Greenberg, is it Greenberg? Oh, Greensburg. 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 Yeah, yeah I, I think that's good. I know that there's not much being done with respect to this at the state level, <laughs> having done a little research over the last few months on that. So we'll see what's uh, out there with our, you know, kind of uh, other 
local communities, either counties and or cities, and, and see what we could uh, maybe kind of borrow to move us forward on these uh, goals and objectives uh, in terms of natural resources and sustainability. But any other comments or questions on this one? I like uh, the restore, connect, and protect natural habitats and sensitive lands and waterways. Obviously, the Missouri River is uh, very important to Leavenworth, and ensuring that we have clean water is really not Leavenworth's, I don't want to say responsibility, right. it's upstream because we get the water that flows downstream, and it's our responsibility for the people downstream from us that we give them clean water, and I think that is happening. But preserving natural habitats, uh, you know, I, you can go places in this town, in my backyard, I can see deer, yeah. owls, every now and then an eagle, coyotes, uh, you know, there's, a, yeah. we're not uh, an urban center, we have a lot of places that aren't built, built up and probably will never be built up, and so we have, you know, that natural wildlife. Yeah. You look at the VA center, I mean, that's, in my opinion, the biggest park in Leavenworth, even though it's not a park, but uh, everyone, sure. it's Ray Miller Park out in front, but I think if you'd ask 95% of the people, they'd say that's part of the VA. But you go out to that national cemetery and just the grounds on the VA. Uh, you probably have Mr. A lot Birch of can probably tell us all the deer yeah. and owls and okay. eagles that he sees along there. And they're protected. The cemetery and other places. Okay. Yeah. And that's very important. I think it just it's a calming feeling to see an owl fly around or uh, something. In my opinion. No, it's great. And I do want to add also that we talk about the Missouri River being kind of a great asset. Missouri River could also be the detriment right. <laughs> yeah. to, to a lot of this planning over the next 10 years and yeah. what our fourth street looks like. So while we're out there looking at communities and how to develop plans based on them, get into some floodplain communities and find out what they're doing. That's a good yeah. idea. That's a good, yeah. great that's, idea. That's a very good, very good point, Mr. Burks. Yeah, I, that floodplain in terms of learning, you know, in terms of... This year we didn't have any floods, but certainly in 2019 we did, right? Um, so, um, yes, definitely. And we've got to be prepared for that, along with all well, the other cities and counties. And sure. some of the details in here, it talks about things like it devising incentives for residents for renewable energy sources. And my husband and I looked at solar panels and yeah. the expense it is to Today. install anything like that. But I think... Uh, Looking in the future, seeing how we could incentivize something like that would help our whole community. It right. doesn't have to be just on city buildings. It could be sure. encouraging the community. Well, there have, have been some people who have made that. Uh, yeah, some that people have. The solar panels, but you know, yeah. I haven't done the research. And it's yeah, some of my neighbors have it, but we looked into it. It was mm -hmm. extremely expensive. Yeah. 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 Well, the, the thought and the idea and the hope is that these, uh, the, the cost of these renewable energy sources are going to come down. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Hopefully. hope springs eternal. Mm -hmm. and I, I think it's really critical that it does, but that's way beyond probably what we need to be discussing tonight. But it is, it, it is important because until it's a, affordable by most, you know, by you know, your average family and, right. and citizens, it's not something that's going to take off, I don't think. Yeah. I agree. I think that most people look for, I would say, a five-year payback, a five-year break-even. Yeah. Obviously, your initial investments can be a, a lot, but if you can show reduction in utility costs and other costs, if you can get a payback in five years, yeah. I think it's that makes uh, sense. A, a good investment for most people. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And how we can partake in that to help right. that, the federal government, the state. state uh, right. And technology is improving every day, and, and you know the prices will come down, but... Right. Where's that break even point or where do those lines intersect? That's what's important. Okay. Good, good conversation. Anything from planning commission members? If not, we'll go to the next one, Ms. Ferguson. The city of Leavenworth is planning for the economy in 2030. Let's talk about what it is today and where we want to be in the future. In 2030, how can we strengthen our education opportunities to grow our population and prosperity? Currently, a large portion of the Leavenworth residents work in the educational services, healthcare, and social assistance sector. What types of skills 
will people need to succeed in the future? What are the opportunities by sector, locally and regionally? Fort Leavenworth and the Veterans Administration are the leading employers today. In the future, what types of businesses should be recruited to our community and the region? Currently, when compared to the county and state in unemployment and income, Leavenworth bears on the lower end for income and higher in unemployment rates. How do we increase the income and provide more jobs globally? To reach our vision of 2030, what is our community saying? The community envisions the Leavenworth economy in 2030 to attract professional and technical job sectors, retain the current workforce through providing workforce development opportunities and affordable housing, and for the city to offer innovative and flexible options to bring more businesses. To reach our vision of 2030, what are our goals? So for this section, we have uh, three goals, uh, one specific to economic activity. And so on this one um, and the one below also, you'll, you'll see we have um, a, a lengthy goal, but it can be um, reduced down. Um, and then within the brackets is more of more detail that we can include. So um, I'd, I'd love to hear your feedback on, on these um, especially. So, Goal 12, attract progressive and sound private enterprises by offering affordable living and high quality workforce and business resources to help nurture and support a thriving and sustainable economy with the objective of developing systems and partnerships that better link educa educational resources and local businesses and employment opportunities. And then looking at the jobs and work workforce section, uh, goal 13, increase, increase the employability of the entire workforce, which is develop and expand the workforce development programs and technical education by retaining the middle skill workers to increase their productivity and adaptability by helping the middle workers upgrade their education credentials and skills. And then goal 14, maintain a diverse and stable tax base encourage the professional, scientific, technological labor sector as the region attracts more of these jobs with these highly skilled jobs. Any uh, thoughts, anything missing? Comments from commissioners or planning commission members? I think one thing that we should emphasize is what Leavenworth is known for, what Leavenworth does well, we do government well. Uh, we have the VA Medical Center, we have Fort Leavenworth, we have the federal prison, uh, to name three federal agencies, and obviously right down the road we have uh, the state penitentiary. Uh, those keep our economy uh, fairly stable. They're recession-proof enterprises, if you will. And we need to build around those, and we need to ensure that we keep those. And we, this commission, over the last many, many years have done a lot of lobbying in Washington and at the state level to improve those, uh, everything from the federal prison, we're getting a new one, uh, Fort, Fort Leavenworth and the VA Medical Center. We need to keep those and build around those because that is the core of sure. our, our business. Uh, the amount of money that those three entities, the federal prison, Fort Leavenworth, VA Medical Center, generate in this town is in the billions of dollars mm -hmm. and we can't uh, can't forsake that we right. that that's the foundation of what we are and we can build around that mm -hmm. I, I agree with those comments and those remarks and we do have and it's something that we have to retain and continue to build on are these partnerships with our <laughs> federal partners and um, but so that's those are those are good comments any other comments from commissioners and or planning commission members no, I, this is Sherry Whitson. Um, I echo just what he said. I think that uh, the foundation of what we have, we need to make sure we maintain, secure, and, and grow upon that. And then in addition to that, add the sciences and the other industries, the technology, to just enhance what we already have for stability. That's great. Yeah. That, that, 
you know, those two thoughts together are, are <laughs> excellent, I think, uh, as far as an essential aspect of this 2030 comprehensive plan. Any other comments from uh, Planning Commission members or uh, commissioners? If not, you can go, go on, Ms. Ferguson. Okay, great comments. We'll be sure to incorporate those into goal 14. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and so we're to our last uh, chapter, which is Healthy Communities. Mm -hmm. The City of Leavenworth is planning for the health and safety of the community in 2030. Let's talk about where the community is now and where we want to be in the future. In 2030, how will people feel? How healthy will people be? What are the biggest health concerns for Leavenworth? How do we improve access to physical and mental health care services? What funding will be available for mental health care? In 2030, how safe will Leavenworth be? How safe will people feel? As the community continues to grow, how can we maintain and ensure a safe community for all? In 2030, how do we create a community that celebrates, welcomes, and supports recreational amenities? Are there any gaps in recreational needs and activities? To reach our vision of 2030, what is our community saying? The community of Leavenworth envisions a healthy community that includes access to quality health care and increased funding for the Council of Aging. A continued investment into the quality park system and to have places for gathering and the entertainment for all ages. To read our vision of 2030, what are our goals? For public health and well-being, uh, we have one goal, uh, which is to support a healthy community by promoting healthy development, healthy behaviors, and well-being for all people in stages of life. Uh, this will provide recreational and education resources that promote healthy lifestyles and remove barriers to physical and mental health care. Any, okay. Any comments from city commissioners or members of the planning commission? Well, Commissioner Leonhardt? Yeah, uh, Commissioner Leonhardt. Uh, I know with uh, the Council of Aging, you know, eventually uh, looking into moving into possibly Cushing building maybe later next year, there might be, a, it'll be a positive for, you know, maybe the expansion of services and everything and they'll have more room. Yeah. And there was be, something in there about increasing funding for that. And I, we don't fund, that's funded by the county. So I, I didn't understand that comment in there. On the council aging. It was on aging. her video. Increasing funding for the council on aging. And I don't know that that was. I mean, we wouldn't, yeah, we wouldn't fund that. But. A city, a city thing. Ms. Ms. Ferguson, did you hear that? You know, the, the Council on Aging, obviously, is an organization that's an integral part of the county, the county government, um, so... We don't have anything to do with... We don't, in terms of the funding, that's not our responsibility, but certainly um, I guess we, still we still recognize that as a city, as one of the five cities, we benefit from that, from, it, you know, yeah. from, from the work that's being done. That's, so. I mean, that, that's true. That's what I meant. No, the only thing I would say on this is that we're in the, we're in the middle of this, uh, hopefully middle, hopefully hopefully getting towards the end <laughs> of this pandemic and this health crisis. And there are, uh, I would say, a lot of insights and maybe even some lessons learned with respect to public health. Once again, that's the primary responsibility of the, of the county commissioners and in their dual role of governance and also being kind of the county, uh, you know, uh, health, health board. But I would think that there'd be something, some things we could learn that would maybe uh, inform our plan and our strategy going forward uh, that has happened because of this COVID-19 health crisis. So just, just a general comment. Because uh, we're certainly doing business differently with respect to public health now than we were at the beginning of 2020. And some of those things we're going to we're gonna have to continue to do, I think, even 
as we uh, you know People defeat this be. current virus. Any other comments from commissioners or planning commission members? Um, this is Sherry Whitson. I just what keeps rolling around in my mind right now is um, just mental health and making sure that we take care of that. Absolutely. Um, of course, with the pandemic this past year, um, we're seeing numbers of yep. suicides and just depression increase with people. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, just public awareness of that in some in some way. I'm not sure how that would be encompassed in there. Not necessarily the COVID, but um, just making sure that you know we take care of the community on on the mental health side. I think it's imperative. We, we are doing that. In fact, uh, I've been a member in 2019 uh, and you know first part of 2020, a member of the Leavenworth County Mental Health Task Force. And actually, uh, so we suspended our meetings for the last I would say six or seven months. But today we reconvened via Zoom, of course, oh, okay. and we had a good meeting. And uh, so that we're. We're moving ahead on that, and uh, yeah, it's definitely something that the community and the our community, our county, our cities are concerned about, and we need to address the challenges in that particular area. And I was, we had a good meeting today, and we're going to hold them, start holding them monthly again. So, good point, um, Ms. Shockey, and uh, we'll uh, we won't we won't overlook that. Perfect. Yeah, I think also with us having um, veterans in our community, you know, uh, that's just something I, I keep looking at. I, I look at statistics a lot. That's my background is economics and statistics and just the, 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 the sheer number of uh, veterans and suicide rate going from 24 during the pandemic to 26 a day. It's just, it's crushing to hear that. Yes. So just, yeah. just my little two cents there. No. Good, good two cents. Appreciate your uh, feedback there. Uh, that's what these sessions are about. So, anything else? On, Thank you. Anything else in terms of public health and well-being? Uh, I don't think so, Ms. Uh, Ferguson. Is that? Are, are we kind of near the end, or we, do we have more? We are nearing the end. We've got a couple more within this section. So, okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So that's we, we just need to cover public safety and then oh, yeah. um, recreation and leisure, and then we'll be done. Okay, so, no problem. Um, you know, we appreciate the really great conversation you're having, um, and just to hit on definitely the the mental health piece of it. Um, you know, we as I mentioned, we have more detail in the the strategy, so sure. that is a focus. Um, you know. That, that we're looking at um, within that objective 15B is um, resources uh, for physical and mental health care. So, um, for sure. Okay. So with, with that, we can go on to public yes. safety okay. with a goal of creating an environment in which the people and visitors of Leavenworth feel safe by providing outstanding and effective fire, police, and other emergency services. Uh, which would include um, continuing to reduce the city's crime rate, improve the city's ability to recruit and retain quality public safety personnel, continue to build better relationships between the city's police officers and the community they serve, and continue providing high-quality fire protection and emergency medical services. I think that's a good goal and good objectives. That's my, my, you know, my initial reaction to, uh, to that particular slide. Uh, any comments from commissioners and or planning commission members? Do we forget something? I, I'm, I'm comfortable with it. I, I can't think of anything we've forgotten. You know, the, the devil's in the details. And, you know, those are the actions and activities that have to be pursued to meet, you know, to meet those objectives and the timelines associated with, uh, with those actions and activities. But, um, I, I think this is a uh, this is good. Yeah, providing emergency medical services once again, that's a county thing on the right. ambulance service, if you will. Mm -hmm. But we are handicapped a little bit with uh, Cushing Hospital closing, yeah. and probably the reality is I don't know that another hospital is going to come in and open. You know, that's uh, the well, way they... that business model is working now. That they're consolidating more and. Right. Uh, Hopefully that we will keep our one hospital, St. John right. Hospital. Right. Yep. 
Well, we have the county EMS, but we're our firemen are really our first responders yes, on most medical emergencies here in the city. Yeah, and, and the, I think the, the, with the firemen and the emergency medical services, the um, you know that the county provides, I think that's a real strength of, of this mm -hmm. particular of, of our community, yeah. the county, mm -hmm. and the city, and all the cities. <clears throat> I think it's been just very evident to me ever since I moved to my present home in 2002 that it's a real strength. And so the, once again, just the things you know, the policies and the you know mm -hmm. the budgets to keep that going, not only the city, but also the county, it, um, definitely is important. Any other comments or questions on this particular uh, slide? If not, Ms. Ferguson, you can move on. Well, uh, Mike Burke, I got one thought, please. Go ahead, Mr. Burke. Um, I thought, I think this is, the goal and objectives are really well written. Mm -hmm. My one suggestion would be, if you could move 16 Charlie, make it 16 Alpha. I mean, I think that might resonate with our re with the residents yeah. here in the yeah, city. I think so. Thank yeah. you. Particularly with what's happened this year. And, uh, well, absolutely. Uh, I'm going. And at the national level, state level, and, and in our local community. But, yeah, that's, a, good, good that's a very good recommendation, Mr. Burke. I'm comfortable with it. Yep. Thank you. Anything else? We'll go on to the next one, Ms. Ferguson. one will look at recreation and leisure and how to create a community that celebrates, welcomes, and supports recreational amenities. Uh, we're looking at doing this through increasing green and open space, increased resident and visitor participation in community events, increased resident and visitor use of parks and recreation amenities, and increased equitable access and proximity to parks and recreation amenities. Um, any com I mean, they, they seem to be good objectives for this particular goal. Any comments from commissioners? Well, no, I think especially this year with what's going on, uh, yeah. we've had a lot of people doing more outdoor activities, yep. mm -hmm. increasing with the trails and right. Parks, uh, bike mean, riding. Yeah, parks, in general. Yes. So, it's a, and um, it's a yeah, I think positive. Yeah. I think the citizenry in, in general is, you know, everyone's different, but sit, the citizenry in general has got a commitment to getting out there and exercising, whether it be bicycle or walking, and I've seen a lot more of that, obviously, this year with mm -hmm. what's going on in terms of people dealing with the uh, COVID-19 health crisis and needing to get out and exercise and just get out of the house. Um, Commissioner Pricing, any, any comments on this one? or Nope. No, I actually... I made my comments earlier about yeah. the need to maintain our parks. So, yeah. Bit. Yeah. Goes together, yeah. Yeah, we've got so so many. I mean, Havens Park, look how large that thing is. And it's just, it's a big one to bite off, but there's right. a lot of people doing, volunteers doing yep. work on it now, yeah. too. If our city can support that, that's good. Yeah, they've, they've been doing that and lost a little track of that this year because I think it's been a COVID-19 health crisis year, but I know that in the past there's been a heck of a lot of good work done by some of the volunteer groups. And a lot more start. people are using it right now, oh, too. Good. Are they? Yeah. Good. Well, we need to get that uh, restroom. That restroom. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe then you have it. even more people using it. That's right. The Boy Scouts will use yeah. it then. <laughs> it's, a inside, it's a little inside city commission joke. So. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, anything else on this one? Planning Commission members, anything on this? I think it looks great. I think having yeah. fun is, 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 is really important for, for a community, for, for you know, the student. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, and this is part of that. It's so, life. Um, uh, Commissioner Wilson, you're, you're remote. Any comments or questions on this one? No, sir. Okay. All right, Ms. Ms. Ferguson, what's next? That would be it on on my end. Okay. So. Right. okay. Ms. Ms. Very good. So, um, Ms. Ferguson or Ms. Shockey at this point, or, or Ms. Hurley, uh, this has been a good session. 
Um, just maybe just a little review of what, what, what's going to go next in terms of the big steps and yeah, what's the next when step? we might come together for you know, another one of these or what, what, what do we think? What's, what, what are we looking at as far as a timeline? Yep, I'll let Shelby or Sheila talk about kind of what the next steps are and what we can expect to see moving okay. forward from tonight. Okay. Ladies, who goes first? <laughs> Sure. So, so as mentioned uh, previously, uh, when we started, we'll take the information that we heard, um, your, your feedback, your comments, they were all really great and some really great discussion around the, the goals and objectives. And so we'll refine those a little bit more um, and then I'll send them out to everyone for um, additional feedback. Um, and then from there, we'll really start to dive into what the, the priorities are and we'll start to, or, sorry, what the strategies are and we'll start to prioritize those um, and then identify uh, the, the individuals um, who are responsible for the actions. Uh, so we'll really start to get into that here in the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, so we'll be looking for that um, refined document of goals and objectives from me here shortly. Um, and then after that, we're going to start to take these um, items to the, the community in January and have a community workshop so that we can um, take the feedback that we've been hearing online and um, really start to get an idea of, you know, are, are we forming the, the goals and objectives to, to not only what we're hearing from you all, but also um, from the community and get their, their, their thoughts on it also. Yeah, I think that website you've established, that website that you've established for the engagement, because I, I, I got on it late last week, and it's very easy to work, work and you can put your ideas in, very user-friendly, so I uh, applaud you for that. Uh, I'd certainly like to see more ideas from the community, Mr. Bateman. Um, <laughs> uh, he's in the audience, because <laughs> I know he's got a lot of great ideas, but it didn't, well, the ones I was looking at, I didn't see it, but... But maybe he's, he's going to do that in, in the very near future because he does have some good ideas. But I've been impressed with that. So I just encourage the community to get go on there, get registered. And uh, if you have some ideas, go ahead and put them in, put them in that uh, website. Have I said anything that's wrong, Ms. Pe Ms. Ferguson? No, um, I was going to say I, I echo that also is... Um you know, I did see the, your comments on there. Um, I, I've been feeling through those in the last couple of days. Sure. Um, and, you know, there, there is a feature of the idea board. So you provide um, a comment and then someone else can respond back to you. And that's really where you start to have that dialogue and conversation with members within your community um, and where those ideas and uh, thoughts really start to get spurred um, and help us really define what those, those strategies will be. Uh, so I, I do encourage um, and echo what Mayor Grizzol said is, you know, get on there, register. Um, we're, we're just using the registration for purposes of, as I said, to make sure that we're, we're having an inclusive cross-section of the community responding. And then also that way we can really kind of see where, um, what areas we're not getting responses from um, and start to try to reach out to those individuals um, more directly um, if, if needed. Um, so the registration piece of it is just solely for that. Um, and then also just to provide any updates. Um, if you do provide your email, then you will receive any updates that take place right. on yeah. the uh, website. Okay. So good, good um, I do encourage you. Like I said, we've had 350 or so um, site visits on there with 43 um, registered participants, but we definitely um, would like to see and hear from from more um, more of the residents and community of Leavenworth. So, yeah, great. This mayor, this is Sheila. I I would recommend that the uh, commissioners, uh, both city commissioners and city commissioners, take a goal statement and post it, and just ask people what they think. Um, we should do to accomplish that, and that would be really helpful. And even send the link of the um, the uh, website out to friends and um, others in the community. If you're in organizations, uh, it'd be great if you could just kind of spread the word and start a conversation with people. And I think that more that we have uh, local people talking about the issues, the more um, involvement we'll have that's on the good. site. That's a good. That's a good idea. Okay. I can I can do that. I mean, we all. I think Melissa's been putting out stuff too. 
already, yeah. you know, and yeah. we just need to share it. We right. got to share it on our own on our social media to get it out there. Okay. Good. Anything else, uh, Ms. Shockey? Okay. All right. Um, anything, Ms. Hurley, anything else? Or? No. no. Okay. Well, thank, thank the Planning Commission members for the work that they've done in their, in their meetings prior to this particular meeting, but also for coming tonight and participating. I, I appreciate it. We appreciate it as a city commission. Um, so before we uh, adjourn, I'm going to go around the horn. And Mr. Kramer, do you have anything for the good of the citizens? Uh, not this week. Sorry. Okay. Um, Commissioner Wilson, anything? Yes, I just want to say thank you for the very, uh, for the presentation. It was very detailed, organized, and refreshing. And I'm glad that we selected you all. <laughs> so, uh, but not to the public. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Wilson. Commissioner Leonhard? Uh, no, nothing at this time. Great presentation, though. Yeah, thank thank you. you. Commissioner Freisinger? I have nothing. Okay. Commissioner Bowder? I don't have anything to add to that. Thank you. I don't either. Um, today is the 1st of December, so we'll see how yeah. quickly uh, we go through the month of December. But uh, no, it was a very, very good presentation. We're making really good progress on this, which is very important for you know, the future of our city, and uh, we'll keep working it and um, come up with a um, comprehensive plan in the not too dis distant future. So, without further ado, um, we'll go ahead and conclude tonight's study session. Okay.